The stream is about to start We'll talk about code or whatever we'll talk about today It's about to start So please hang tight while I check that everything is okay Sound check Camera check Lights check How's my hair? Oh, wait, I don't have any hair Maybe put some pants on and I am good to go So get ready about to start Get ready wherever you are Cause the stream is about to start Hello, everybody. How's it going? Um, I've been realizing that these intros are too long and nobody is on here to even see them. So for people who are watching this in the future, hi, and we're just going to get right to it. How you doing, Leandro? Hello, Aria. It is great to be here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, done. Intro is over. We're, we're going to get right into the action. Um, so if you don't know or if you haven't watched last week's stream, We've been data mushing, so we're going to do some more data mushing. Hello, Synchrotron. Well, you are here, so you know what's going on. <laughs> um, we started kind of tinkering with data mushing in Audacity, which works fine, but like it's not easy. So then we were like, well, Leandro is just going to go ahead and code some stuff. And then he did. And they, the <laughs> results look a lot better than Audacity stuff, to be honest. Yeah. So I learned many things. I didn't dive too deep into this rabbit hole, but I learned many things since our last stream. Okay. The first thing I learned is that we have not been data mushing. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Um, I think that these terms are kind of loose. I don't think that there is any formal standard for the different techniques in glitch art, but. As far as I can tell, for the most part, when people talk about data mushing, they mean a very specific technique that is not what we have been doing. And Oh, like using like audio effects to do video or using video yeah. effects to do audio, so, whereas we've just been messing with the data, right? No, 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 no. It's not even that. So, yeah, you are right that data mushing is not just putting audio effects in video or vice versa. The name for that, as far as I can tell, is data, um, what is it called? Uh, bending, data bending. Data bending. Because okay. you're bending the data. You're taking audio and bending it into video or vice versa or something like that. You can even take something that is audio and print it on paper and take a picture of right. a, a waveform and try to bring it back into audio. And that would be a, a, an example of data bending. So what we have been mm -hmm. doing for the most part is data bending. Data moshing is something else. As far as I understand, data moshing is when you get a video file, specifically a video file. I don't think it makes sense in other kinds of media. So you take a video file and you extract or you remove, you delete the iframes in a destructive way. So mm -hmm. usually a video when it is encoded in something like a, a X264, I think is the name of the codec, uh, you have these iframes, which are just pictures, and then you have the so-called B frames that are not a whole picture. It is just a difference between the existing frame and the next frame. So maybe yeah. like the, all the black around me could be just completed completely wiped out of the file. Instead, it would just say all these pixels are the same as the last frame, which is, of course, much more compact. So 
in data mm. moshing, you just remove the iframes from a video stream. And the result is that it will try to apply the difference in the wrong frame. And that yeah. has some nice results visually. So it kind of morphs one image into the next because you don't see, so suppose there is a transition, like it goes from me to you. Instead of just having an iframe to say, now Aria is on the screen and then you see Aria, instead what happens is as you move around, your, uh, your movement will be encoded as this differences and it will be applied to the frames and then I will be morphing into you and that's mm -hmm. not at all what we have been doing we have not been playing with the structure of the file in fact we have on purpose have not looked into the structure of the files we have treated the file as just a stream of bytes bunch of data yeah so I think that data, uh, there are many examples of data moshing on the web and people who are interested can see some, some videos about that. It is interesting, but I don't think that's what we are going for in this piece. I think that in this piece, it makes more sense to do data bending. So I think we should continue with data yeah. bending. Yeah, 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 agreed. Yeah, and then I learned more about techniques for data bending videos because doing images like we were doing was fine, but it would be much more interesting to do videos. And mm -hmm. the problem we had last time was that a video file has some structure to it. It starts with a header that, or in most codecs or most containers, it starts with a header that says, this is the size of the video. This is the frame rate of the video. Uh, this is the color space of the pixels in the video. And then there will be some frames of the video, the I frames, the B frames, and so on. There will also be some control data in the middle of the file to help you seek particular places into the file. So if you're watching mm -hmm. the video, you can skip around. And the problem is, even in the very simple codec that we used, that was in an AVI container, even in that codec, there was some metadata interspersed with the file and then when we applied something like an echo effect to the metadata in yeah, the middle, we broke, we broke the file. Yeah. So I looked into other ways of doing this and one of the ways is super simple. In fact, you mentioned it on the stream and like a dumbass, I didn't understand it. <laughs> mm. But we could have used FFmpeg to decompose a video into a bunch of BMP files, image images. And then uh -huh. we would run our JavaScript program on the files and then recompose into a video. Into a video. Fun. Yeah. You said we could do that and I was like, a, no, I don't, I don't understand it. Let's continue just working with an image. <laughs> and the cool <laughs> okay. thing about BMPs is that it is a, a, an image format that is uncompressed. And for the most part, it is just a small header and a stream of pixels. Right. That's why data moshing with BMP files, or sorry, data bending with BMP files was more successful because we were not tripping over headers or metadata of any kind. In fact, we just skipped the start of the file and even the end of the file, and we were good. So we learned that that worked. Yeah. But then I learned some yeah, other things. Always it's like top left to bottom right, the way the code is written, like post the header. So that's actually kind of useful too. I think we can we can do some stuff like we've been kind of adjusting the whole image, but what if we also start like um, I think it was Bo and Hybo that said like um, shifting pixels in an image like to the right or something so each pixel of the image can like progressively be moved around that could kind of be a fun effect as well. Yeah, well I was thinking of something else actually. I wanted to do videos. So yeah, we could break a video into a series of images, images. process mm -hmm. them and then recompose the video. But I thought, hey, there must be some video format that is similar to BMP in the sense that it's super it's dumb. It's just a series of... It's just a yeah. series of frames. And I learned that such a thing exists and it's not AVI. Because AVI is audio and video interleaved. Video interlaced, the interleaved, yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. And there is another video format 
that is just a series of images smushed together. In fact, there is no header in that kind of file. If you want to play is that kind raw? of file, it is kind of like raw. So if you want to play this kind of file, you have to inform the player what is the size, what is the frame rate, what is the pixel format, because that oh, information fun. is not stored in the file itself. And that's exactly what we want. I also uh. learned that Audacity is not the only tool capable of doing the thing that everyone uses Audacity for, which is to import a stream of whatever as if it was WoW audio. There are other mm, tools that allow you data? to do that. No, uh, well, maybe. I don't know, I haven't checked, but I am thinking yeah, of... Yeah, pure data would be actually like um, really good. I mean, I used to use MaxMSP, which is awesome, but MaxMSP is now on a subscription model, so I haven't used it in probably like since 2018 or something. But pure data is free, and pure data is like object-based coding, but you can do audio, video, and you can... You know, there's like an audio buffer that can read any file and that file can be literally anything. So if you actually take, I think it was Bo or somebody of that nature um, who was trying to get like stock market hall averaging to use as a compressor. So like one thing you can do in Pure Data or Max MSP is you get like an Excel spreadsheet and then you can use like the values that you chart on a graph. You can use that as like a waveform to synthesize, or you can just read it as an audio file, which would just be like a bunch of noise. Um, stuff like that would be really cool. But of course, like pure data has a steep learning curve. You got to learn the name of a lot of objects um, and things like that. Could be cool to check it out though, perhaps in the future, because yeah, I, I, I haven't mean, really looked into it. But I, I learned about some yeah. other tools that do this kind of transformation. And what's cool about them is that they run on the command line, like FFmpeg that we used last time. Fun. So if we want, we can have many sources and we can batch the conversion of all of them and batch the data, data bending of all of them. And then we end up with just a stream of bytes that we can manipulate in JavaScript, that we can load in Reaper, that we can load in Audacity and do anything to it. Nice. And yeah. What so, are the what are the programs? So one of these is hang on, I am going to show you the website for it. So it's like nothing too amazing to look at to look at. But here it is. So it is this um, Swiss Army knife of audio. And nice. It can read any kind of audio format or most audio formats that you would expect like wave mp3 and so forth but it can also deal with raw input and then of course there is also ffmpeg so the cool thing about this and ffmpeg is that they also have audio effects so we don't ever nice. need to leave the command line if we want. We can also use Audacity, but we never have to leave the command line. And after I learned all this, I was surprised because everything I could find, every resource I could read, every video I watched on YouTube was using AVI. And it, it was trying to not mess with the metadata so you would have to data band one frame at a time it was the results were right. not that interesting either i think that the code that we wrote last time was doing more interesting manipulation than the examples i uh, some of the examples i found online yeah so i thought we could explore this today how about that yeah let's do it right so here is what i came up with i'm going to delete this file for now if i can Oh, I think it deleted the file after all. So this is the input video that we created last time. I cut it using the lossless cut program. So it's just a short segment with our faces. 
Okay. And then I used ffmpeg with this command line that I think is worth an explanation. So I used this command line to transform this into this raw format that is just no metadata, just a stream of pixels and a stream of frames. But uh, we could just copy and paste this, but I want to explain this because the ffmpeg command line can be daunting, but it actually makes a lot of sense once you understand the incantations. So it works like this, ffmpeg, and then you will have a bunch of inputs and one output. For each one of the inputs, you can specify a bunch of options. So you can say, for instance, interpret this input as uh, a different format. It is an MP4, we know that because of the extension and FFmpeg is going to do the right thing by default, of course. But if we wanted, we could interpret this as, I don't remember the exact command line, but we could say something like the container really is MKV. So mm -hmm. this option will apply to this input and it will interpret the file as an MKV, even though the extension is MP4. And in this file, in the MP4 file, there is some metadata that specifies this, the size and the frame rate and whatnot. But I could come in here and specify a different frame rate and a different size if I wanted. And all of the options apply to this input file. And in this command line, I have only one input file, but I could have multiple input files because maybe I want to overlay one video as a watermark on top of another, do a picture-in-picture -picture kind of thing, or take an audio file, a video file, and spit out a file that has both audio and video. So if I wanted to do something like that, I could have input one, input two, and so on. And then all the options up to this point apply to the first file, all the options up to that point apply to the second file, and the remaining options will apply to the output file. So that's how you can read and make sense of a, a command line that is using ffmpeg. In this case, I want to have this as an input, the file that we just saw, and I don't want anything special about the interpretation of that file. I would just let ffmpeg use the defaults. But for the output, I will want to use this special format that is the raw format. And this is the type of file. It's like an MP4, except that it has no metadata and no compression. So I guess, if anything, we are doing the opposite of data moshing at this point. We are not trying to interpret the video file, find the iframes, take them out and whatnot. No, we just want a bunch of frames put together. You can think of this as a file in which every frame is an iframe. And then these are the options for this file. So in this case, we will use a codec that comes with FFmpeg for video. So there are video codecs and audio codecs. This is a video codec that is raw video. Don't do any encoding of the video. Just spit out all the pixels as they come. And then you have to say how a pixel is represented. You could have eight bits per pixel per color, or you could have, uh, instead of RGB, instead of colors, you can work with uh, luminance and gamma and whatnot. I don't remember the names. Chroma. There you go. And you can dedicate four bits for one of these, two bits for another one of these. So there are different ways of representing one pixel. So you can specify the pixel format, the frame rate, and the size. And I think that this size is actually wrong. So what I want to do is to use another program that comes with FFmpeg. It's called FFprobe. And I will pass the input file, and this will spit out everything that oh, FFmpeg knows info, about the file. That's useful. Yeah. So here it is telling me what are the things that are enabled, because you can compile FFmpeg with different libraries, and you end up with different codecs available, different tools available to you. These are the versions of the specific libraries used to compile this. 
And then it shows me the input file. I could have many, as I said, you can call FFmpeg with multiple inputs. I have just one input in this case, it starts counting from zero. And um, the metadata that is relevant here is probably things like duration, starch, and bit range. These are the kinds of things that one needs to know when one is creating video for YouTube, for instance. You know, you, you need to know what is the bit rate you want to export with. And then this container, this MP4 file, has two streams of media in it. One is video and one is audio. When I was playing the thing, we didn't hear the audio, but actually there is some there is audio a... when I was recording this. So the video is encoded with this codec. The bit, the the pixel format is this. So in this video, each pixel is represented with this style. This is the size, the bit rate, the frame rate, and I'm not sure I know what these are. Then the audio is has been encoded with this codec, sampling rate, number of channels, number of, uh, or I guess the bit rate of this encoder, and so on. So this is how you make sense of this wall of text that comes out of FMPEG. It's not so hard once you get the hang of it. So each stream of data will have its identifier like this. And then, with the FFmpeg command line, you can mix and match these streams of data in however however you want. And that's what we are going to look at right now. So we can specify the codec, the, the pixel format, and you can even map streams. For instance, here I am sort of mapping the audio stream to nothing. So Effectively, I am discarding this audio stream. It will not be part of the output. And you can map these streams in arbitrary ways and transform them along the way too. So what comes out of this is a video file that is in this raw format, no header, no nothing. And what I said about the file size, I think that the resolution is wrong. So let's see. Uh, it was 19, 20, 10, 80. Yeah, let's just divide by two. So that's nine, 60, and that's 540. 540. And the reason why I'm down scaling this is that, as you can imagine, it's gonna this- It's going to be a big file. It's going to be a big file. And uh, that's why yeah. I reduced the frame rate and the resolution. But anyway, let's yeah. run this line and what comes out of this, oh, and when you run FFmpeg, you get a wall of text that is, again, reiterating the inputs, all the streams of data it finds in the inputs, and then what it what it will do. So it will map stream 00, which is the video stream in the original file. It will map that from the codec that is H264. I said X264 before, that's an implementation. H264 is the name of the codec. And it will convert that into raw video as we asked it to. And then it starts outputting stuff. So it will output a file that has this name that has just one stream of raw video using this pixel format, this resolution, and this frame rate. And then it gives you some statistics about how fast it's doing that. So anyway, it comes out this file, and it is a bit large, but it's not so large. It is from a five megabyte input. Oh my God. It generated 51 megabytes. 62,000 though, Jesus Christ. What was that? The bit rate is 62,000. Oh, no, no, no. So these are statistics about the progress of the conversion. So it is, Able oh, to convert speed, this yeah. much. Oh, hang on. Is it? Gotcha. No, 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 no. You're right. You're right. You're right. 
These are statistics about the output file. So it took Fuck. seven point two. Uh, well, I guess it converted at two point seven point two times real time. Mm -hmm. And I guess that's the bit rate of the output file. You're right. Still not bad. Like it's it's about one and a half times the size of CD quality audio. I guess uh, we could we could work with this. Like it's not like mm. 19 gigabytes for a 10 second video because there are video formats like that. Well, this is a video format that has very little in the way of encoding. So you would expect it to be large, but if you are editing, yeah. you would expect seek into this file to be super fast because when you sync into an arbitrary point in a regular file that is using a codec, what needs to happen is yeah. it needs to find the previous iframe and reconstruct that frame from the B frames along the way. And in this format, no such thing is necessary. Damn. You can just frame, skip yeah. to that frame and start playing it. So that's why some yeah. people convert from footage that is in MP4 into uh, like an Apple lossless to edit and then uh, reconvert back, back into something that is yeah. encoded or compressed. Right, so we get this file out and I didn't try to play this in VLC. I wonder what happens. And it seems like Lossless Cut wants to try and open this, but I will try to open this in VLC. It doesn't even want to. You got it, but there's a way of doing it. Yeah, I, I guess. Even there, you just enable all applications instead of recommended applications, and you can open it with anything you want. I would lower the volume, and I would try to play it. It just refuses to ah. play. It doesn't do anything. VLC needs a header. Yeah, VLC needs to... Uh, I guess VLC has no built-in way to ask you the metadata. But FFmpeg yeah. comes with FFmpeg, with FF Probe that we saw before, that gave you the information about the file, and it comes with FF Play that plays a file. And let me just make sure when I open VLC, it seemed as though it was trying to interfere with this stream audio, but it seems to be okay. So FF Play has a way of asking for inputs uh, like for the metadata on the inputs so um similar story but the way the arguments are named is a bit different which is unfortunate and i don't like how there is no long form for this in ffmpeg in the command line for ffmpeg there is no long form for some of the arguments so this is very cryptic. I, I wish there was something like, but that's not a thing. So in the end, you get these lines that read like gibberish. Anyway, so here you have to specify the format. The pixel format it can be the same if you want to reproduce the file accurately. And I don't have the frame rate on this. So I think it's gonna be playing at the wrong fr frame rate, but let's try it anyway. Yeah, it's still playing the file just the same, it's just playing faster. Really fast. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if there is a way for me to set the frame rate. Why, why not choose the same code like... Uh... Yeah, I tried as this. When you were in code. Yeah. So you see how the size here has to be S and here it has to be video size? Yeah, I don't think that oh, this is gotcha. going to work. So maybe different. Yeah, it is unfortunate that it is like this. Yeah, R is not an option. But uh, maybe frame rate? I like that they decided to, <laughs> to use full words for playback. There we go. Yeah. And naturally it is that low. Looks about 10. It, it looks like 10 frames per second. So I think that's what we want. Yeah. And let me just reorder this. 
No, it was in the right order to begin with. There you go. Yeah, so codec, pixel format, uh, frame rate, and video size. Now, what's cool about this is that we are informing the metadata. We don't have to inform the right metadata. <laughs> right, yeah. And this is already a way of data bending because we are just taking that stream of bytes and interpreting it in a different way. Cool, huh? Sick. <laughs> yeah. It's like a VHS kind of effect. Yeah, that's very oh uh can you can you play that now also faster? Like make the frame rate be 30 on the second line. I will separate these lines so we don't accidentally change the line above because the line above is the, the good one. What do you hit to run the highlighted line? Oh, I I hit Command C and then I hit Command V and then. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. And then just hit enter. Okay, okay. Yeah. Nothing, crazy. Nothing fancy. Right, can we watch it one more time? Sorry. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. And what I also find really cool about this is that you can have your frame rate like relate to your tempo. Um, it's kind of cool. And also you adjusted the height, so it's kind of going up and down. So now if you set height to 540 and you set instead the width to like 950, is it going to start going the other way? Is it going to go left and right as it messes up? <laughs> oh, Jesus. No, it totally <laughs> breaks everything. That's so interesting. Love it. I love this. Yeah, great, 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 great. Oh, man. <laughs> well, I guess the problem is that it probably encoded things left to right, like we read left to right, top and lo yeah. top to bottom. So if you change the height, you are just starting to interpret yeah. the next frame as part of the first frame or maybe vice versa. You're first, starting yeah. to interpret one frame in two parts. But if you mess with the line height, or sorry, the line length, then yeah, you just end up with garbage. Mush. What if you make it like 959, you know, like just mess with it a little bit. Nice. Oh, oh, and it nice. starts okay, glitching cool, in cool. like that. And it's, yeah, yeah, like the glitch kind of accumulates up top. Yeah, because yeah, it starts sick. one this pixel. Like... It starts one pixel off, but on each line, it goes one more pixel off. Yeah, exactly. Another thing we can try, and I played around with this real quick when I was experimenting with this, is changing the pixel format. So this is the same frame rate and video oh, yeah, size, yeah. but changing the pixel format, changing the interpretation of each byte. That's also kind of glitchy nice. and yeah, fun. Yeah, you can see the red and gr uh, like the red parts and the blue parts kind of falling out of sync. And this to Very me cool. is Waro. <laughs> all to, all the the uh, Marilyn yeah. Monroe thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, lots of fun here, but. Hey, we cool. have a stream of bytes. We can do anything to this. So we can load this in Audacity and do whatever manipulation we want. And we know that we are not breaking it. So do you want to try that? Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can try we can try Audacity. We can try converting it into a WAV file and then using and something using like Reaper. Reaper. We can use the command line. FFmpeg has many audio effects. Sox has some other audio effects. So what? where do you want to go next? <laughs> I, I think that in, in I summary, mean, what I'm doing is I figured out some of the technical aspects so that we can be creative together. So where do you want to go? Yeah. Uh, 
I mean, hey, if we can go to Reaper instead of Audacity, I'll go to Reaper all day, every day. Right. So in order to do that, we have to re-encode this into a WAV file or something that Reaper would right. recognize as audio. We definitely don't want it, Reaper to recognize this as video. Though we could do right. data bending in the video processor in Reaper as well. But um, I guess next is to look into socks. So let's look at the manual for socks real quick. Man socks. And <laughs> it even recommends that if you want to have a GUI, then go to Audacity. And it seems like this tool is not really maintained anymore. I should mention that. As Sad. far as I know, the last update is kind of old, but everything still works. So whatever. I'll tell you one thing, like when you start getting into this stuff, you'll run into a lot of like unmaintained software, a lot of YouTube videos that like did a lot of videos on this, but like like really amazing videos and they have like 3K subs and they gave up, which like fair enough. So unfortunately it's like a dying art, I don't know. To me, it's like nothing's more interesting almost, but apparently people disagree. Yeah. So... Uh, I read the manual for so oh, I skimmed over the introduction of the manual for socks, and what it says is that yeah. it can interpret files. Come on, where does it say that? Raw. Oh, come on. I cannot find that anymore, but it say it says that you can convert from raw data into a working wave file, but I haven't tested this. So let's see if it actually works. It converts raw headerless audio to a self-describing file format. Self-describing meaning it has some header to indicate the number of channels, <laughs> yeah. the sample rate and whatnot. So let's start with this example and see what we can come up with. So I suppose that this is the sample rate and it's the funniest thing because in the manual somewhere, oh, it wasn't here, it was on their web page, I think. They say, like, uh, typical audio sample rates are 8,000 uh, 8, <laughs> samples per second, 16,000 samples per second, and the pros are using 44.1 samples per second, which is kind of funny. <laughs> so, yeah, it was here that I read this raw... This part of the menu actually looks the same. Oh, here it is. File format types. Socks can work with self-describing or raw audio, which is the same feature that Audacity has, and that's why everyone uses Audacity for data bending. So, yeah. Uh, digital oh, telephony... Digital tele okay, that's, that's fair enough. Yeah. This day, 16 <laughs> is becoming more common. Professionals are using <laughs> 96. Okay. which arguable yeah right so let's see r is for the rage and do you want to go with something traditional i suppose right yeah yeah now the encoding is something that we saw in um audacity when we were importing files the mu law a law and that sort of thing yeah and by the way i read about the mu law and a law and I sort of explained it right like less time. So I guess in digital telephony, they had to use few bytes. Not only the sample rate was low, but also the bit depth was low, only eight bytes. And they needed to encode human speech as best as they could in those eight bytes. So the mu law and a law are different ways of doing the thing I described, using more of the bits for the part where the voice usually lives. So you're sort of restricting the dynamic range. It's sort of a compressor. It is, it's like a compressor in a sense, a compender, so to speak, because it is compressing to use those bits in the part that matters more and then decompressing on the way out. And the difference between mu law and a law is very small. It's mostly like a US versus Europe kind of thing. 
But anyway, at this point, we can say how we want this to be interpreted. And in this example, it says sign. But I think that it may make more sense for us to use the mu law since that's what everyone is using when they are doing things in Audacity. So let's see how sure. we can specify the mu law. Oh, come on. A law, that's how you specify it. Do you want to do A law or mu law? It seems like the U mu law is North American and A law is international. A law, baby. So let's do A law. The bit depth, I guess we can go a little above H. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, that, let's do 16. More. And then, yeah. well, actually, eight might be a good idea because then we are using fewer bytes or fewer bits to encode each sample, which will make the For, audio yeah. longer and the effects the will, file longer, yeah. will, will have a greater effect, will manipulate the video even more. And then the C, what does that yeah. stand for? Number of channels, I guess. One channel. It's going to be a mono file. Let's make a mono, yeah. And this is going to be raw, but in wave. And now we cross our fingers. <laughs> I think it'll work. No handler for file extension, blah. That's all right. We can rename this you. to raw. So I guess I will change. I will copy. I will copy raw into raw, raw. <laughs> Raw, 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 raw. Oh, I didn't change this line. Hey, Cow Bliss in the house, Reaper Blog in the house. Hello, hello. We're doing housekeeping, but then it's going to be smooth sailing. Now, let's see. The size of the file should be almost the same. It should be a slight, just slightly bigger because now we have some headers to describe the contents of the file. And they're about the same size. And if I don't Great. humanize, we'll see the number of bytes. So yes, the WAV file is just a, a 58 bytes bigger than the original. And that makes sense because the header for WAV is like a little bit of text. Oh, it's text? Let's see it in a hex a editor then. So yeah, in a hex editor, I mean, it depends on how much metadata you have. If you have more metadata, you can see links there and all sorts of things. But yeah, otherwise, cool. it's just like, here's me, here's my face, goodbye. So I suppose that some of these numbers are the bit depth, for instance. This is probably the bit depth. Mm -hmm. And in terms of 48K... I suppose that some of these numbers are going to be like 48K. Yeah, makes sense. Cool, st cool stuff. So this is a WAV file. I wonder what it sounds like. Put it into Reaper. I wonder... Still better than Mumford and Sons. Zing! And I wonder how long it is because... We decided <laughs> nice. how long 18. it was when we decided the bit depth, right? We have this amount of data yeah. to churn through, and that translates yeah. into a long file. I wonder what it sounds like. I, I will bring it into Reaper, bring the volume down, and then we'll see. But I have to be smart about the way I open Reaper so I don't mess with this stream, remember? <laughs> I was watching a data bending video, and the dude was using, like, f Photoshop files. And they actually had a really nice sound. They would go like, like it wasn't just like a string of noise. It was like interesting. Could not import wave. Wow, Reaper. Ah, uh, get out of here. Can VLC handle this? Hang on, I have to be smart about the way I open this because I don't want to have then loud maybe noises. the header is wrong. Yeah, I was expecting more of socks. I'm disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Sox still thinks it's like 1922. Um, let's use. Let's F see if Audacity opens it. It opens this WAV file. Just for. 
just for knowledge. Stop. <laughs> Don't scan my VSTs. <laughs> it's a nice try, Megan. It, it's I went too try with though. this trying to do blender shaders that look like screen noise. Nice. Okay. Audacity can take it. And wow, Reaper, it is you're about 18. It is about 18 minutes, so that checks it's out. It's interpreting it as oh no, never mind. Raw is it's the like name of the file. Converting it to 32 bit float. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting though. Again, it's not like just white noise. It's like I think that is the nature of the video. You, we have a lot of black in my my picture, and your picture right. doesn't have as much. So I think we are seeing the patterns of black and color, and then it changes to you, and we can see a different pattern here. Interesting, fun. Now I will try and. It's lower very the highly offset. You see that, like. Yes. Like it's not like audio where it's like below and above the zero crossing at a decently equal amount. It's just like, hey, all these values are above one now or are positive and now all of them are negative. So let's lower the gain and I'm not sure where this is going to output. I'm not sure you all will hear this or if I will hear this, but let's try. So I hear it. Do you all hear this? I do not know. So I have to go into the... We got to make uh, Reaper no. play this. Come on, Reaper. I don't have control what over that. What if we do... What if we do an intermediary uh, conversion in Audacity? Just convert this to 48k 32-bit float. Put it into Reaper. Oh, yeah. That's a good if, idea. If anything, Audacity will just add some header info. I don't think it'll change the final product too much but come on reaper yeah um let's see if john tidy has notes on this it sounds interesting we need to listen to that together let me uh go to the command line again because we used socks to do this conversion people are dying to hear it yeah i i will i will I will play this. Don't worry about it. I will find a way. I'm thinking maybe we could use FFmpeg to play this because the same way that we can convert into raw video, I wonder if there is raw audio. Let's go to the menu because this is a well, good I chance for me to Wave show the menu. Well, I always thought Wave is raw audio. Or no, I guess it has Wave headers. has a header. Wave has headers. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's a good way for me to showcase how to navigate the FFmpeg documentation. So. There are some docs here that can be a bit scary, but yeah, um, there are different sections for different things like the formats. That's what we are interested in, I guess, or maybe encoder, decoder. But there is also this all page and it's freaking long, but it has everything in it. So you can command F. So there is raw video. I wonder if there is raw audio. Oh no. Oh, that's too bad. But I guess the thing with audio is because like stereo is so prevalent, right? You write up the like like you can write frame after frame of a video and it's pretty straightforward. Le read left to right. With audio it's a little more um like complicated than that. Why? Because you may have two channels. So it's like, you know, oh, you're like just how, how the Reaper reads the sample. Yeah, I mean, I know, but you need some sort of header data for that, right? Yeah, but the WAV file is supposed to have the header. I mean, Audacity is beating Reaper. Isn't that a shame? <laughs> no, yeah, I'm I'm disappointed. What if, what if we take FFmpeg, we take our raw wave, and we do this. So we just, yeah, just run... Yeah. Run the audio through FFmpeg. Don't do anything to it. Just run through FFmpeg because it will perhaps re-encode in a way that makes Reaper happy. Like, uh, 
So we got another file. It may file. also be. It may also be that we used eight bit. I think you can't do that. I think there may be a reason that you can't do it. So if we make it like sixteen, it'll start working. There you go. After FFM pegging the file, it works. And Can you hit Command and F two on this baby? Oh, this here. Yeah, Command F two. Yeah, so it just changed the bitrate to sixteen. I think you can't do eight bit. You can't import eight bit. You can eight bitize things, but I don't think you can import eight bit. Um, yeah, you can see that I'm trying 64. to. I'm trying to favor a command line approach to this because I want to be able to later write a little program to automate some of this. But yeah, yeah uh, you yeah, make yeah. a good point. So let's try and see if instead of H, we had 16 and one channel and raw raw into and raw. And then it should be like 16. nine minutes. Uh, data encoding or sample size was not specified. Yeah, it was. You liar. Oh, interesting. It doesn't seem to like that 16. Let's go to the manual for socks again and look at the B option. Because apparently I didn't specify it right. Oh. Seems like it did. Yeah, it seems like I did. Well, let's try 24 then, because they have 24 in the examples. Mm. Data encoding or sample size was not specified. Hmm. Well, sample size was specified. For sure. <laughs> sucks, sucks. <laughs> Fail number two sucks. You got one more chance. Hello, mage. Oh, maybe this was the problem. We didn't specify the endianness of the file. Let's go with big endian and try that. Because, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Sucks is right and we are wrong. Uh, we didn't read okay. the, well, maybe Sox is wrong in the error message not being clear enough. But once you have eight bits, that's one byte. You don't have to specify the endianness of the arrangement because it's just one byte. Gotcha. But when you have multiple bytes, then that becomes an issue. So if you want to have 16, we have to say that the endianness is big. And once we have this, because we're reading the manual here, and I want this to be as readable as possible for outsiders. I will make this into long form. It's the same thing, means the same, does the same, but it will be long form. So bear with me as I do this. And what's happening on the chat? I'm not following the chat. I'm too focused on getting the details um, right here. People are saying stuff. Thing. I'm intrigued. What is the objective here? Just trying to listen to video data as audio. We're not necessarily trying to listen to video data as audio, like we're doing that, Phaserville, just, just for fun. But we are going to apply audio effects to data that we extracted from a video, apply audio effects to it, then, then one more time convert it to video. And you can see the results of audio effects on video data. And the way that works is, you know, um, so imagine an EQ will change the color, right? Um, uh, uh, an echo will take color information from one frame and like apply it to subsequent frames. But it also does affect the color to a certain extent because, um, you know, an echo or a delay is not only a delay, but it also, if you have a continuous stream of audio, sometimes that delay data is added on top of your existing audio. So all those values change and you uh, you get fun, fun kind of effects with it. Um, I think EQ is like very straightforward 
in audio, but I think in video it can have really nice effects. I think once you get too weird, it's just going to look too weird and not like the video that you put into it. But a little bit of EQ, I mean, phasers, anything that like very lightly modulates data could be kind of fun. We should try a cramped EQ filter <laughs> on a video of a cramped EQ filter. Things like that, you know, you sometimes you just got to let randomness take over instead of, you know, I'm a big fan of relinquishing all control to the randomness gods and then just seeing what happens. <laughs> That's what we're doing. Interesting. It seems like if you specify things long form, does it, it doesn't work. I wonder if I have to do it like this. Nope, just doesn't work. Awesome. <laughs> oh, well. I don't like long form. I like short form. I know your reasons for that, but ain't nobody care. Okay. So <laughs> I guess I will try this. And sampling rate was not specified. Well, at least we got a different error this time. But yeah, it says that the sampling rate has not been specified, which we clearly have specified. So yeah. might it not was be bad. working, in fact, when it was like wrong. Maybe instead of 48K, just explicitly say 48,000, though it worked last time. So I don't know what the dealio is. Don't know. But we have Wait, one oh, comment but line. The, where did the NDNS go? Here. Did you did you Oh okay it'd be Well oh, we can try the, other NDNSs. Nope. God damn it. Socks strike three, you're out. Yep. Well it doesn't like to do that, but Whatever, uh, we are able to FFmpeg eyes the output. Oh, sorry, one last and one load last it into Reaper. Because hmm. the first time you ran that code, it worked, and now when you run the same code, it doesn't work. So is no, it, it works, possible it works. that something happened? Oh, it does work. Yeah. So just when you make it sixteen, everything breaks. Exactly. And if I tried okay. twenty-four, I think it also breaks. Data encoding or sample size not specified. Well, whatever. Some bullshit. Whatever. We were able to load this into Reaper. So now I can Great. say Let's that hear. I want to output this to three people. First, me. Second, Aria. And third, the world. And then I lower the volume and I play this. Noise. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds like an old remote controlled plane. Or just planes from like 8 bit Atari games. Yo, this slaps. Drake, slide into our DMs. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> Let's Sick. hear what you sound like, because that was me. Yeah, more or less the same. Now, I think I hear a richness to the waveform of you, Aryan. Yeah. It's something it's little, that we just don't get little... when it's me. <laughs> yeah. Now, we can apply some effects to this and try to round trip. Do you want to do that? Yeah. So what I have Let's start to... hella simple. Like, okay, if it were me, you know, this is how I would do it. I mm. would make a bunch of copies of the file and then with item effects, I would put like an EQ, a little delay so that we like batch convert, like batch effects, batch convert out. So we don't have to like keep doing housekeeping. We can just export like 200 or not 200, 10 videos and then look at them. 
Yeah, that sounds like a plan. I think that first let's try to do the round trip and have this whole setup and then we play more creatively. Because okay. we will have to do some work to get back this audio into a raw video format and FFmpeg will have to be able to play this thing. So, um, yeah. How do you want to start? You last time you let's wanted just to do, do a echo. high pass. High pass? Let's just start simple. Yeah. Okay. High pass at like or like let's do low pass because there's a lot of highs in that audio. So let's do like low pass at 3k or something. Low pass at three. Yeah. Okay. Just like that, right? Yeah. The file definitely changed. Yeah. But not Just by much. rounder corners. Not by a hella, but I, but enough. I think that we can perceive oh, yeah. a difference. Yeah, it right? definitely like, looks all, different. All those sharpnesses are gone. Yeah. So now we have to go and find this file here. Where is it? It's that file. So that's the raw FFM package yeah. and glued file. Now we used socks to convert from... We used both FFM package and socks to convert from raw stream of bytes into wave. Let's just try to use socks to convert back into a raw stream of bytes and see if that's a possibility. <laughs> oh, Cabless has a good idea of format filtering. We can do that. We'll do that. I don't know if, Leandro, you have any format shifter things, but uh, I'm sure we can we find may, something. We, yeah, we'll find something. So this is the cooked, or I guess the low pass... Mm, and I Submit want raw to the chaos. That's right. And I want the output to be raw. So I don't think I need to specify all of this. It's going to pick it up from the WAV file, and it should output to a raw file. Is that all there is to it? I don't think so. I think so. Oh, there you go. We, we have something. We should have called this. We should have called this stream raw dogging audio. <laughs> 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 All right. <laughs> so we have some raw file. I wonder what that looks like. Uh, it is the low pass raw file, and it is just ever so slightly smaller than the WAV file, which seems to indicate like, that like we just stripped out some of the headers. Now we need to play the opposite game where we copy from a low pass from raw to this video format, then we have to play it, I think. I think that that's, our, that's all there is to it. We don't have to convert back to MP4. We can using FFmpeg, but we don't have to. Can just try and yeah. play the it. The bow is predicting a low pass will blur the image. Let's see. Um, and let's at least be sane and keep the same inputs here, <laughs> the same frame rate yeah, and the yeah, same yeah, size. Yeah, yeah, Though yeah. we know already how to play with that. So drum roll, is this going to do something? I think so. I think it will be fun. Bow says blur. So let's see. No, it didn't blur. It made it all satanic. It's almost like a CT scan um, in some places. Yeah, that's wild. So I would say one thing, though. Clearly, during our conversion and reconversion, this is more than the result of a low pass. Like I some think of so. the frame data got like smushed together. So, yeah, I, I in fact, then we got to refine our conversion and reconversion. I agree. And I think that we should do a round trip without any effects just to see what comes out of it. Okay, but I also have another idea. Remember that we found out our bit rate is 62,208. Let's convert it to an audio that has a sample rate of 62,208. 
That way, every second of audio will be a frame of video. Or, sorry, every second of audio will be 24 frames or a tenth of a frame. Every 100 milliseconds of audio will be one frame of video. So that we're not, because we're taking these data, like 62,000 per second, and then we're taking a 48,000 chunk of it. So we're constantly like grabbing like a chunk of a frame and then we have some leftover for the next frame that's all fucked up and has like some amount, like a 14,000 bits of the previous frame. You know what I mean? So we're not like, we no, need I see to what match you mean. Yeah. No, I see what you things. mean. But I think that that would only be a problem if we were trying to interpolate the samples, which we are not. We are just interpreting the bytes as if they were audio in this sample range. So I think that you you have a good point there and we want to play with that. But I think I see the, the issue already. I think I know what's messing with this. We are doing the A-law conversion and we are not really coming back from it. Mm. When we are doing the conversion from wave to raw, we should be well, a lawing it. Uh, the problem is this a law is probably being lost in the process anyway. When it goes through FFmpeg or it, when it goes through Reaper, we are probably losing that, aren't we? Yeah, we have too many intermediary steps. We need to we need to reduce that as much as we can. Yeah, you know what we could try. Uh, Socks produced a WAV file that what if we don't go to wave at all what if we just use socks to apply some effects and output some raw for us yeah how about that why not we, so, if there's like a high pass or whatever we can or a low pass so we learned that socks is not that intuitive to begin with but let's see if we can make it work so all these steps below we will not use. We will just use socks and I guess it's going to start like this. But we will output, um, let's say, a low pass dot raw or maybe something else. Like let's do echo. And then let's refer to the socks documentation. So it goes like this. Um, you start with the input files and you give the options to the input files in pretty much the same way we saw here in the FFmpeg documentation. Or actually, I didn't open the documentation, just explained it out loud. But yeah, bunch of options and then a file. So it goes same way, bunch of options, file, bunch of options, other file, bunch of odd options, other file, and then finally, bunch of options, output file. And then effects. And there's the effects. So then there are the effects. So let's go to some effects. And you said that you wanted something like an echo. Uh, adding. Well, I still want to see what the low pass does, if it will blur it like Bo said, but whatever, echo, whatever. Low pass. So we'll do a low pass. So we have to pass the effects at the end, not in the middle, but at the end. So low pass. And then do you want single pole, double pole, two poles? Well, it's optional. One uh, pole is fine. Each pole is 60 dB per octave for those who don't know. Yes. So two pole is 12 dB per octave. So we pass minus two and then the frequency and there is a little K here. Let's make it three. I will not use the K. And then the width is optional. The default is no repo. So we'll go with that. And then let's, do it. let's try it. And this is not an echo. This is a low pass socks. All hmm. right, drum roll. We have a warning, but we don't have any errors. Oh, <laughs> low pass clipped. Low pass clipped. 
Decreased volume, oh, perhaps. 1,300 samples, yeah, why not? 1,300 samples is not... And the, it's also jithering. <laughs> That's not going to be good. <laughs> but again, I guess it would just yeah, introduce whatever. noise. Uh, so to play yeah. this, Who we... Who doesn't like noise? I have to start putting sections here because these are alternate timelines. <laughs> and we interpret the thing just the same, but we pass a different file and we converge or we copy. Oh yeah, Rhea pitch has uh, format shifters. Cool. We're we're once we figure out how to like do this bit without breaking stuff to an unexpected degree, then we can break stuff in a controlled this way. This is what I'm talking oh, about. Oh, there we go. Sick. That's a great effect. That's so pretty, actually. That's so nice. Very nice cool. and slow. And, and Bo, you're right. It did kind of blur things a little. Our, our image was blurry to begin with, but um, they, but there you go. Since this was so, so successful, do you want to play with other effects in socks and see what they look like? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, so I think we should automate some of this. Or let's leave the automation for later. Let's just play around with this some more. So we did a low pass. Let's see some other effects that have a chance of being nice. Uh, well, let's try an echo now. Okay. Echo. So we'll do... Echo. We can lose the sock suffix. And... The gain on the input, the gain on the output, and a delay and decay. Well, let's just do this. Okay. Oh, it sounds like a metallic so robot like playing dry music. Rate. There we go. <laughs> or open air concert in the mountains. Now, you know what it would be crazy if I ran this and the image that came out was an open air concert in the mountains. <laughs> I would be surprised to say the least. <laughs> Suddenly, like Bob Dylan. There you go. Yeah, you can see the echo. Yeah, I can see four Sick. eyes. Yeah. And the coolest thing about this is that it's so quick. The feedback is so quick. It's not like importing Fucking something into Audacity. Yeah. Also, it works with videos. So we are like head and shoulders above what we did last time. <laughs> yeah. I want to try one thing. Can we make a duplicate of this where all we change is the delay time from like 1,000 to like 500? Because I have a theory I want to test. Do you want to say I it out loud before I run it? 5, so I think as the rate goes down, the space between the stuff changes, but I think there's a point, maybe 5,000 or maybe whatever. Like, I really want the next frames to start bleeding into previous frames or, or vice versa. Don't, wanna, don't so you want to make so the I think there's a delay longer? Well, yeah, but I want to see what happens when it's shorter, and then I want to see what happens with like, like five hundred and then five thousand. It so is 500, similar. I don't see much of a change. Yeah, to be honest. I still yeah. see four eyes. I see next, and I just my four eyes are now closer to each other. Yeah, I noticed that. So my it stands like to here. reason that instead of going lower, if you go higher, then the frames are going to start bleeding. So let's do ten. Yeah. One, two, three. Let's do it. Let's see what the chat thinks. Are you mind blown? Can Sox host any VSTs per chance? That would be really nice. I Still won't be able to use can, Rio Pitch, but... I think it can do some plugins. Um, 
or was it FFmpeg? It was FFmpeg. I don't think that. Uh, Sucks. Yeah. If it thinks that audio these days, oh, there we go. Okay, maybe not. Yeah, it can do. But what the hell is a Latspa? That's a plugin format for Linux, and it's like VST or LV2. Ah, but Ooh, Linux. But I don't have any here at hand. Latspas. Yeah. But we are not going to run out of things to do here. It comes with a lot of effects from your regular filters to chorus, uh, compression. Um, this should DC just, shift sounds fun. It should just change the brightness, shouldn't it? Right. Delay down sample. Earwax sounds interesting because it's such an audio thing. I wonder what it does to video. Let's do it. Yeah, but do you want to keep playing with the echo? Because if we calculate the echo, we could try and make what you wanted, where the frames are going to start bleeding into one another. I actually missed the result of the 10,000 because I was reading the chat. Oh, now here is 100,000. And in fact... Oh. I no longer see four eyes, so, it's um, just mess. Because my eyes are way too below the screen now. Yeah, I guess it's starting to wrap around. Like I think that these lines the, are yeah. wrapping around. Yeah. So I guess that won't happen. Because my theory was if you go above 69,000, it will start to bleed into the next frame. But my theory was wrong. No, I think you were right. I think that's what we are seeing. We, we it can start oh, to see... Oh, there we go. Shoop, shoop, shoop. Yeah, you can start to see like a trace of the movement because we are blending one frame with nice. the next. Oh, I like this frame. It has like Iran flag colors vibes to it. And it's nice that in the beginning, the glitch doesn't happen because the echo yeah. hasn't had a chance to kick in. Yeah, nice. Nice. I wonder yeah, if there is like, some way for us to transpose the file, because if we were able to transpose, then we wouldn't have such a strong horizontal orientation to the glitchiness. Well, is there a transpose in the effects of socks? Or well, socks or is the wrong place to do this, because I'm thinking of this in terms of video, so it should be on the conversion to uh, this format, right? At that point, we should be able to perhaps have some way of transposing things. I'm not sure. When you look at socks, we are thinking of audio, and audio is one-dimensional, unidimensional. Anyway, so do you want to play around with specific values? Because it seems like this is the bit rate of the thing. So if we go like 60 to 62, if we go that, then maybe something interesting will happen. Maybe nothing will happen. It's about the same. Interesting. And in the end, we um, always get this effect. You know what I think this is? When playing a file, video codecs or video players have to do something when there is corruption. And I don't know this, but I think that when something happens, when you know how, for instance, when you are trying to encode text and you don't know what that character is, then you get this this question mark thing. It's like a lozenge yeah. with a question mark in it. I cannot seem to be able to yeah. type it. But you know how we get that? I think that when video players don't know what to show, they show green. It uh -huh. often happens with corrupted files that they show green. So I think that that's why at the end... The player doesn't know what to do. In fact, it even tells it's us that it's like, yeah. invalid buffer or whatever. So in the end, it just goes to green. Cool. In a weird way. Right. Um, Let's try other effects. Let's. I want to try earwax. Yeah, let's do it. Oh, and I should rename every... Some of the of stuff I... Socks says is a bit snake oily. Like I just saw, it says makes music easier to listen to on headphones. What? 
Yeah, that's the year wax effect. Description of earwax. Adds cues to forty one for. Hey, let's just see it. Oh, At this no point, I also want to it? hear earwax. No such file or directory. What did I mess up? I think. Oh. Raw, Earwax raw. works only with stereo audio, Sam. Okay, I'm I'm okay with that. I don't mind. Number of channels, two. There you go, socks. Go to town. Oh, no. Didn't work. Same. Only Some works with stereo me. audio files sampled at 44.1. Okay. Yo, John, I don't know if you're still on the stream. But D, I bought a t-shirt from you and fucking DHL lost it. Or at least, ooh. Hold the phone, sorry, somebody's calling me. <laughs> we see you in a minute. Back, come back. I'm He's like back, everybody. He's seconds. back. Don't, don't go to the be right back page. Damn, everybody in the stream leaves instantly. Never, never go to that. Really? Yeah, everybody leaves right away. Like, I'm sure even this two seconds, people were like, okay, bye. <laughs> well, one person left, but whatever. Fuck that one person. <laughs> okay. <let's... laughs> Did we lose someone else? I think that's now, like a frame, <laughs> but yeah, don't never go to we'll be right back. <laughs> Only Mr. Beast can do that. Yeah. So did you see that the earwax? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's kind of like, brrr. I liked it. I love this effect. It is funny. Looking. But yeah, and you're right. Like all the greens is like, ah, I don't know what to do. Green, right? <laughs> seems like it and i wonder so we could also play with this the result of that i want to know what happens if we take the result of that and we do something to the greens you know like just grabbing all the greens and doing some shit to it like a green screen kind of but thing? i don't know how to extract green from things <gasps> I mean, I know how to do it in the video editor, but in terms yeah. of data, I don't know what what represents whatness. Mm, we can try and make sense of it. Uh, hang on, let's see if we can make sense of it. Because we know that the top of this file is a bunch of green. I guess there is a line of weirdness at the top, but then it pretty much yeah. becomes green. So let's open this file in a hex editor and try to make sense of what green looks like in terms of bits, and then we can try to manipulate that. So we are looking okay. at the output at this file, but we want to open it with a hex editor, and we want to skip the very top and go Somewhere like this. I think that this is what right. green looks like. Yeah, E1, 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 E1. It looks like a whole lot of E1s. So here's something we can do. We can write a program that will... Or maybe Visual Studio Code can do that for me? Let's just find and replace and take all the E1s and change them to F0 and see if our theory is correct. Yeah, that's what I want to do with Visual Studio Code. And I'm F zero. You say why? Why F zero? Do you know what color F zero is gonna be? Uh, or no, whatever. Let's make it one one. Just something so that we know it's different. Fair. So I wonder if I can do that here without having to search in binary mode. Find bytes hex e one. It found a bunch. Replace with. Oh, I cannot type. Oh, that's so sad. It almost has the Why feature. Why can't you die? And now the interface <laughs> glitched out. That's so weird. Maybe there's just so many E1 results that it, like, gave up on life. Come on. Microsoft wrote this plugin. I expect more from them. That's not a... <laughs> that's not much of a endorsement, is it? 
Oh, oh 294. Well, that's just horse shit. Oh, now I can type. So let's okay. do something like 1-1 one, one, and let's do binary search. Sure. And that's replace all. Oh, the replace all button is unavailable. Oh, there you go. I think it's I just did it. because it's I did it. finding so many. No, nice. You know what it is? I cannot click on the thing. I have to tab to it. But whatever, I'll take to it. To the thing, okay. I, I will play that. Let's see Walgreen. <laughs> ah, motherfucker. I guess it's harder than that. Thing, things are harder than things. Be. But we got it to 1-1, one, one, all right. Is E1 and nothing changed, too which close is... to 1-1? One, one? Perhaps that's Let's it. Let's make it... D three. No, let's make it like zero zero. That's very far. Okay. As far as we can go. Oh, you know what we are doing? We are thinking in RGB, but we are encoding in something that is not RGB. You've uh So that's what's up. Do you want to encode with RGB? We can do that. We can find a pixel format that is more intuitive. Yeah, let's give it a guy. So I was keeping all the files, but I think I'm just gonna start overwriting stuff. So we will want to rewrite no! this comment. Raw material editing. <laughs> nah, whatever. do whatever you want. <laughs> so we will take our raw and this will be RGB and the pixel format. I have to list the pixel formats that I have available. Oh, that's not how you list the pixel formats. Shouldn't uh, color hex code be six characters? Yeah, two seems low. Um, but yeah, well, like we weren't in the RGB space, Bo, so now we're going to get be in the in the RBG space. Fernanda says, I could use those picks. Oh, sorry, the picks that I'm eating and breaking, I'm sorry. Um, I do have, somebody gave me the best gift when I was leaving Turkey. They just gave me a whole box of picks. Pick ASMR. But I need thick picks, so that pick wasn't good to begin with, so no loss. I like him big and nice and thick. What is this? Anything more than one millimeter, you know? That's how Papa likes it. Oh, check out this pick. It's a custom pick. It's really thick. It must be like three plus. I'm not seeing my camera, so hopefully this is all clear. Or interesting to anybody but Fernando, but huh? Come on, focus. Focus. I think it's tracking me, whatever. Picks. You know them, you love them. So here's something for us to explore. There is this command you can run, and it will list all the pixel formats supported by FFmpeg as compiled with these options. So we have. Uh, things that can only do input, things that can only do output, some that will be fast, some that will be blah, blah, blah. So uh, we were using this, and it's even listing the number of bits per pixel. Isn't that great? And the bit depth If you go RGB8, awesome. I kind of know how RGB8 works, and I'm sure Bo does too. RGB8 is hella simple. So each pixel is encoded with eight bits, the first two bits are going to be R, and then three and three will yeah. be G and B. Exactly. Bingo. All righty. So let's do that. And that means we will change this into that and run this. Always like, yes, I know RGB8. And now we have something. And now you want me to play with raw
RGB. That's the name. Oh, right? my cat is on the stream. Oh, but we also have to run oh, this Izzo. command. That. Oh, Izo. And then this. Oh, interesting. I was expecting this, the result to be different, but it is similar. <laughs> it's like literally the same, yeah. Yeah, did I mess something? No. I wish there was a video equivalent to a null test. Oh, I am interpreting the pixel format with the wrong line. This should be RGB 8. 8. Does that change something? If it doesn't, I'll be shocked and appalled. There we go. There we go, huh? There we go. That's... That's... That's video. <laughs> you can't deny that if anybody is trying to challenge that assertion. Let's play with something yeah, less extreme. Code. Let's do the low pass again in RGBA. Yeah. Something is going weird choo, choo, here. Choo, choo. So I think, again, it has to do with the amount of data, right? So the U14 is like uses a different number of bits per pixel than RGB. So again, all that stuff got shifted. Um, so U14 or U420P, how many, uh, how many bits is that in, when you were looking 12. in that manual? 12, right? That's so the yeah, one and we that kind of makes sense. That kind of makes a lot of sense because it felt like every frame has a third of the next frame in it. So we got to scale this. You know what I want to do? I want to use um, RGB, RGB 24 because that's one byte yeah. per pixel per color. And that to me sounds very reasonable. Yeah, reasonable doubt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The colors got so much gentler in RGB too, in RGB eight. It was all like Warholian. Um RGB twenty four. Ha! Ooh, that's there you go. Why is it black and white though? That's interesting. Because we are low passing. Too many bits, right? No, because we are low passing. Ah. We are low passing, which means that we will see a stream of RGB, RGB, RGB. We are sort of evening them out. We are adding them together and yeah. taking the average, which is great. Can but we low pass at like 10K just to see a difference? We see a bit more color what? at the edges. Yeah. Where the difference can is we greater. High pass? I think that we can, and I think that a high pass will take the contours of things. But why is it showing us several frames at once? That's weird to me. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, it is weird. High pass at 2K. Easy. My yeah, cat is hella it's mad sort of finding the it's sort of finding the edges of stuff when it's showing me. That's cool though. It is very clear that it's showing the edges of it's finding the edges of stuff, and your scene yeah. is more complex. Why is it repeating? <laughs> Why is it doing that? Yeah. Um, and now it would why? make sense for us to play Ooh. with twenty four. Because then each frame right, will turn into yeah. will turn into one sample of audio. Oh, and we are still playing with stereo. That's not what we want. And this is still forty four point one. That that doesn't really matter. Well, let's see if socks breaks too. Nah, <laughs> same stuff. No. God damn it. 
I'm very curious as to the whyness of the howness of these things. Yeah, it is crazy. You can't control it. You just got to go with it. <laughs> you just got to see what looks good. Save it. Forget about trying to recreate it. You know, this will be good for like also like, you know, people these days from Iran are trying to like send footage and say stuff without being identified. And, you know, you can blur a face, you can pitch shift the voice, but if you just completely fuck up all the data in there, you know, good luck decoding that cops. <laughs> and some use some people use this kind of glitchy stuff to do, I think it's called the stenography where you hide a message. Instead of encrypting a message, you mm -hmm. just hide the message in plain sight in the middle of a video like mm -hmm. this. Yeah. You should overlay, like, do drugs <laughs> and on the video and then that much. <laughs> I'm not too happy with the Shut results up. of RGB. For whatever reason, I, it is... You know, okay, can we try one thing? Mm. At the beginning, at the very beginning of our process, right, we got our video with Yuv. So we go to the very source of the process... Oh, did you already do that? Did you like convert input MP4 with RGB24? That's what I did, already? yeah. Already? Oh, and that just didn't, that was a no bueno. Yeah, I mean, let's just see if, uh, 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 what is it called? A round trip. Let's see if a round trip works. So if I want to round trip this, I should RGB24 and everything else is almost the same. This should play. No, it doesn't play. So there is something wrong with my setup here. Maybe dot YUV only works if the color space is YUV. That would make sense, wouldn't it? <laughs> Yeah. I wonder if there is some kind of RGB format. Dot I'm just RGB. making things up. Let's see. Bo, Bo is... Something came out. Damn, I have to disappear for 20 minutes. That's all right, you know. Those images are mm. wicked. Yeah, they are pretty good. Uh, that's too bad. It seems like RGB is not a good pixel format for us. Because not even yeah. the round trip works. Yeah. We, I mean, we can work with other youths. Yes. Youths are good because they also like lend themselves well to data bending. Um, yeah. Yeah, we have our raw thing again and let's go up a bit and find one like this. I don't know. I have so many command lines now that I'm lost. Let's go for it. I was thinking of this. I was like, you have to go and make sense of this later when you're writing a thing. Um, I'll be raw to you, and then here. I did like the result of earwax, I gotta say. Pretty good. Okay, let's go over this just once more, make sure that I didn't miss any steps. Oh, no. <laughs> Come back here. Crashed? No, no, no. Uh, you know when you're trying oh. to hit a shortcut and you accidentally hit Command H and then you hide the window? Does that happen mm. to you? Happens to me all the time. The thing that happens to me is I forget, like, I don't know, every once in a while I put my fingers not on shift. Oh. Now it's purple. Oh. That's pretty good. That's pretty, that's pretty, pretty tight. Pretty neat. And I have no explanation as to why. <laughs> why did it change color? <laughs> I don't know. Wait, let's look at the code for a sec here. Oh, oh, you want to figure it out? Okay. Just to see if we find anything glaring. 
we still have no. raw raw as the input output raw output yeah i don't know looks right to me whatever Crazy. i will take it but let's play with other yeah, effects I <laughs> yeah i i think like now we're in a lane that works do you want a flange um ooh, sure fear stuff sounds fun too but let's flange first let's flange oh i will delay keep the weird I, I will the keep the I will keep the ear wax. Yeah. So delay. Can we do delay very short, like zero zero one, something like that? And depth, I'll just put let's one make here. it like at least. Or is it in seconds? Okay. C3 for this detailed description. All parameters are optional. Well, I guess this is gonna be in terms of samples. But it may be in seconds. Whatever. Depth. Depth. Make it make it like 0 0.7. So it's there, but it's not like completely dominating. Regenerate? Uh, regeneration. That's like the feedback. Make it 0 0.3 or something. Let's Width. start subtle. Width. I guess we're mono, so I don't know if that even matters. Maybe just one. I don't know. I'm not sure. Speed? Unless it does mono to stare. Speed, like, again, is it is it in milliseconds? If it's milliseconds, like something like 100. Yeah. We are dealing with, like, seconds or milliseconds. We are not even sure. Shape. How do we, yeah, do we just say sign? Like, what do we say, you know? I don't know. All these parameters well, are optional. Let's optional, just go with this. Right? Yeah. Let's see what eh. we get. It's too similar. Yeah, I don't see... Can we start with a base video that's a little less fucked up so that we can, like, see the effect of the flanger on its own? Parameter speed feel like must be between this and okay. the late depth regeneration, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Oh, look at that. They have an ASCII diagram of a flanger. <laughs> that's pretty sexy. <laughs> Oh man, and they have the defaults even. Base delay in milliseconds, great. Oh, uh, and you can, the shape, you can say sign, just like you expected. <laughs> cool. Cool. So you wanted the, to just see if the original video I think videos... a raw video, yeah, or like output.raw, is it like a normal, regular, oh, well, I'll be a son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the purple thing is really weird. It wasn't happening before. I think make the depth like one. Now that we're like, oh, we can't feel it. Let's like feel nothing but it. And let's also change it from one millisecond to like 10 milliseconds. That you way will we have can to... actually see a revolution. Do you remember the order of the arguments here? Yeah, the first one is uh, delay. Delay, depth, region, width, speed. So you want to change we this to watch? The... <laughs> Dictate it to me, because I'm dumb. Okay, make it 100. Because the frame rate is 10, if it's 100 milliseconds, we can perceive that in a frame-by-frame -frame basis. Again, I'm thinking linearly that audio and video just are linear, but like whatever. And let's make that one, and let's keep the rest for now. Just to make it hella ups. What the fuck? It's still not very obvious at all. Well, that's the flanger for you all. Let's go to the next one. Yeah, the flanger. <laughs> so it just goes to show the things that you think may be really crazy. They're like, bleh. And oh, let's do a phase like, shifting eh. of the signal by 90 degrees with a Hilbert nice. transform. Because that sounds fancy. Nice. And the that's what I want to see. The old hills. It's too similar. Whoa. What's happening? The Why are we getting purple? is like there. Yeah. Not that I'm complaining. I just want to know why. Did Even the Lopez was doing something similar, right? Well, 
Well, the low pass made it black and white last time. See, this is why you don't overwrite stuff, but, but. Well, uh, uh, try and keep renaming price. all the things yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, did I mess something along the way? Let's double check. Uh, input file, codec, raw video, pixel format, this, that, that, and that. All of that looks good. I copy and paste this and I end up with raw youth. And then... And that looked normal. Oh, come on, hang on. I have to say yes to FFmpeg. Then I copy that and it's then... like, I need your consent. Which I guess is a good thing. So yeah. with this, we can play raw, which we just created. And it is... And it's a regular... Uh, it is a, a good old video. And then the raw file is also correct. Is CP overwriting? I think it is, but just to be sure, raw raw is gone. Raw raw is back in. Then we come here and... Oh, Fernando's right. In our flanger, the width was too small. Because it's from zero, from one to 100. So I thought one means like just keep the same width, but it's not like that one is like 1% width. So if we change the third number to a hundosies, maybe we'll get something. But sorry, not, I didn't mean to distract you from checking. No, no, yeah, that's fine. We will, we will return to that. I'm just. We'll come back to the flanger, Fernando. Yes, we will. Okay, I think that all of this looks fine. I think that this is what we get. It's all purple now. Such is life. But it wasn't purple before, so I'm just like, what What changed? That's a good question. I don't know. Let's rerun this. It is using raw raw, and yeah. it is the first one that works for us. And it's not purple. What's okay, the difference good, between good, good, good. what we have here and there? So all of this is the same. Mm -hmm. This is copying. And yeah. All of that is that the same. That is the same too. So there you go. I guess that is just the effect of Hubert. I guess I will, I'll just take it. I don't yeah. know. Let's turn one command into the other by changing this. And then we end up with something very, very equivalent. And then this line is 100% the same. Fine. So if I take this and put it there, you can delete this now. Then we should get the non purple effect. And we do. All right. And then we can reestablish our faith. And I think that this will be purple. I think it's just what Hubert does. Yeah, it is. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Returning to Flanger with a new copy. So, what do you want to change again? Here is the reference. So that's second, um, or yeah, the second one value that you have, let's make that 100. Let's make both of them 100, why not? Okay. Because also, I guess the yeah, depth I'm saying one meaning 100%, that's not how it'd be. I think, it, I think that the... I see some extra noise up top. The effect is more pronounced. Yeah. Especially the shadow again, here on my face. I was I was expecting a lot more craziness. I don't know. I was expecting something to evolve through time, but it didn't. It just so yeah. In it our just, like did something. our JavaScript program, we had mm -hmm. the effect getting modulated, and in this case, exactly. we don't have that. So we may want to play around with the JavaScript program again just to see. Can we what set the does. delay time to like 3,000 or something as a the last delay test? Delay time to 3,000.
No, I'm not seeing a time-wise evolution. And perhaps that's because of these errors, right? Socks fail, Fledger. Must be between 0 and 30. Oh. Well, son of a bitch. Oh, whatever. Let's I guess just delays go to the next above one. that we won't really perceive as a flanger. Yeah. So in here, we will try. Uh, there is this effect called oops, out of phase stereo effect. <laughs> okay. And we have to test that. I guess oops. it will complain that it needs to be stereo. No, just the goddamn no, the purple thing. Oh, I think the purple thing is happening because socks heard Too few input channels. If this is a stereo effect, it wants two channels. It's purple, oh. <laughs> but it's not kind of bad. fun. There's a lot of purple going on suddenly. Yeah, which is interesting. Before, a lot of green was going on, and suddenly it's like ah, I'm going purple. <laughs> okay, uh, this is back to being one channel, and let's pick another one. Overdrive? No mind if I do. Yeah, overdrive sounds good. I would say, would overdrive work like saturation in images? No. It well, does kinda. something. It's a little more saturated. It's pretty good. I like this one. Yeah. I like the color like palette of the image was like very like vintage, like by the beach, um, Copacabana thing. Oh, pitch shifter. Oh, got a pitch shift. Got a pitch shift. But for this, we have some required arguments. Uh, change the audio pitch, but not the tempo. Shift gives the pitch shift as positive, blah, blah, blah. See tempo, blah, blah, blah. Um, well, I guess we just pass a number like 100. Or let's pitch shift a whole octave. Uh, sure, yeah, let's, let's go cray. Is it in sense? It appears yeah. to be. Okay. Oh, that's a bit slower. Do you notice? Pitch shift do be do be uh complicated. You heard it here first. Mm. Oh. 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 Let's go like one semitone to start because I think we went too far. I thought one semitone maybe it won't be obvious, but given how obvious an octave is. Ooh, and it's, oh, it's like, oh, I'm struggling with this one. Yeah. Better be worth it. Oh, oh one, God, one semitone is worse. <laughs> Yeah. It's just Can pure we noise go negative? Now. Can we go like down an octave? Or let's go down maybe just one semitone. Well, I'm going to go down one octave because one semitone didn't really yeah. work for us well, all that well. <laughs> now, this is some oh, big that's brother kind of stuff. Fun. The wobble, wobble, wobble. Nice. That's, I like that. I like that a lot. I'm keeping that one. Let's go. Changing the sample rate. Let's oh, do so some sample rate. crushing, essentially? No, no, no. We are not changing the bit depth. We are changing the sample rate. So we are going to introduce aliasing. Uh, we are interpreting the oh, file as 48K sorry, sorry, and sorry. we can go to like 24 or maybe even 8. That would kind of have a similar effect to a low pass, no? Because we're killing all huh. but... It With made the video short. Steps. What if we go longer? 96k. That's pretty fast. Other one. Whoa, 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 whoa. Your computer is basically like signaling help in Morse code at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I Let wonder if out. we do something just <laughs> wacky like that. No, not like that, like this. 
Oh, is John Matthews in the house? Hello, John Matthews. Ah, that's what I'm talking Sorry, about. Sorry, what was this one? That was just a number that doesn't have any relationship to the original. Uh, <laughs> just got fun. noise. That's a cool noise. That's like a cool like intro sequence. I think this was my favorite. Yeah, that was pretty good. Um, what else do we have? Remix? No, I'm not a DJ. Repeat? No, that's not interesting. Reverb. reverb. Let's try reverb. Yeah, reverb is an all-time favorite. Oh, and favorite. reverse. We got to try reverse too. Oh, and everything is optional. Awesome. Yeah, let's just see it. <laughs> Purple. Whoa. Look at those extra Leandros on your side. That yeah. was cool. I wish there was a way for me to just replay, but I don't think there is. I have to quit and replay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very demonic stuff. Love it. Uh, reverb is, is good. Reverse. <laughs> well, Whoa. it is going to explain. <laughs> Upside down and the other In way. reverse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and check out that Audio Technica on your headphones. Yeah. On that side of the frame. That's pretty sick. That's like a good ad for Audio Technica. Audio Technica. What? That's and sad. One thing we are not doing, but we can, is combine. We can combine the effects. Oh, combine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we like can... rever reverse reverb. Yeah, if we find Sample effects that are very, su very subtle, we can apply them on top of each other. Uh, oh, I wonder what happens. We are going to get a copyright strike, I think. <laughs> Vinyl playback equalization. So is that like the same thing as when you like low pass a thing, record it and then high pass it? Whoa, that's pretty dope. On mine, it didn't look good, but on yours, it looked really good. Silence? Because yours had like less color. That's like a strip silence situation. Is it going to make the file shorter? I suppose. I wonder what happens. Gotta give it a go. I like the Rhea. It it seems to be like you need like a sparse kind of minimal. Open. I think one argument is required above periods. Above 10. Sure. Whatever. I think it didn't run. Fail. Because that looks, uh, yeah. Uh, Duration threshold below periods. Yeah, because like you got to give it like, you got to define silence for it, essentially. Yeah, but how? What, what did I do wrong? Why is 10 not a good number? Do you have examples for me? Mm, yeah, okay. Isn't this a character on the command line? I think I need to quote this. Huh, okay. That's kind of fun. It is kind of fun. What if we tweak the values here a bit? That's kind of fun. Not much has changed. Yeah, you, it shifted a little. It shifted a little more. Whoa, <laughs> I love, like, I just love it. I love these weird changes. It's like, ah, what? So unpredictable. I'll take it. Let's go to another one. Sync interpolation. Well, it's just filtering, whatever. It's not interpolation, it's filtering. Spectrogram, create a spectrogram of the audio. The audio is passed unmodified by the SOX processing. Oh, I guess it is going to produce a... Oh, and then renders an a file. PNG. That's kind of fun. Does it render a PNG? It's kind of useful. That's what it said. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Huh. It's kind of fun. It's kind of useful. Oh, change the speed? Speed factor. Pin 
pitch and tempo together. Nice. Now, the cool thing about this setup we have is that for something like what we were trying to do last time, changing the length of the file would break it because of the metadata. But now, since we are providing the yeah. metadata, it will just take it. Let's start mm -hmm. with something sensible. Twice this. <laughs> now let's Made do it something faster, but also some extra stuff like 0 0.25 0 0.2 yeah let's see oh it's gonna make everything longer so the file is gonna frames be frames to process yeah whoa, nah. whoa 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 not terribly interesting I don't hate it <laughs> what what about something irrational? This is a rational number, I know. No. What about group, something group, group. more sensible? I think I would like to see some effects that are subtle so we could stack them. Yeah. Eh. I think so far the Rhea was pretty like subtle. The reverse was at least traceable. Eight times. Oops. <laughs> if Whoa. we had a long video, some kind of long video, it would sort of yeah. turn into a time lapse. But warlified. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we are still just playing with one source, but we will have to put this through some other sources. Splice, no. Uh, stat. Hmm. By the way, I gotta leave in 15 minutes. Okay. But let's just keep doing effects. Yeah, let's not even try to compose this into a product. <laughs> Didn't do anything. It's just market research so far. Change Stretch. the audio to oh, relation, but not the pitch. Yeah, Swap the stereo yeah. yes, channels. Please. Swap the stereo channels. If the output is not stereo, pairs of channels are swapped. And a possible odd last channel is passed through. I will I will want to try swapping. Okay, I got that. Yeah. With just but one I, make channel. It, make it stereo. Yeah. Your mono right now. Huh. I'm so excited. It, it did something. change. You see the change. I do see. But unfortunately, there are no parameters. So that's that. Yeah, I mean, it just it's just switching channels. But that's something, that's one of the subtle ones that for sure we can... Yeah, that's a good point. The, uh, that's a good point. I will keep it because of yeah. that. And I guess we could go into the remix to try and make it more noticeable, but let's stretch by a factor of two. Uh, let's do something oh. like one and a half. Let's try some math. Make it just like 1.01. Yeah, the tiny little bit. No. I yeah. love this effect, though. I want to make an intro from this. I think that the problem is, since it's stretching, this number doesn't make sense anymore. And we saw that if we have the wrong number here, we get garbage. We get, yeah, yeah. But anyway, we have a synthesizer. Sounds change, complicated. Change the audio playback speed, but not its pitch. Well, same problem. Yeah. This is probably a filter. Tremolo. Ooh. Tremolo sounds fun. And we have to give a speed. And the speed is not in any... Um, it's in hertz, I think? Yeah, so what's the unit of measurement? I don't know. Hurt, uh, or yeah, hurts. 
Nice. That's awesome. That's pretty, pretty. That's good. Cool. On yours, again, because you have the black background, it just looked so much neater and nicer. I think that changes the speed. So it goes down faster. Oh my God, come on. That's the ticket right there. Okay, I'm changing the entire style of my channel. Now, <laughs> everything is going to be <laughs> weird from now on. That's great. It's almost going like, ah, oh, I love that. I love that so much. So it is, it seems to be That hurts, was my really. favorite so far, I think. Yeah, same here. We still get some purpleness um, going. So, yeah. So another thing that's kind of this proves is that we're not like applying the effect frame by frame, but like pixel by pixel. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's tremolo at 0 0.001. It is. Isn't okay, because basically what's happening is that through time, it's trying to bring the like volume down, but never quite getting there. And if you make it really fast, it'll be really fast. Why are so many goddamn garbage things calling me right now? It's insane. <laughs> if it's Whoa. high, it just... It is almost static. We don't see the lines going down anymore. Tremolo is we a don't winner. See the revolution. Tremolo is a winner. Tremolo, yeah, hell yeah. Trim up win. sample voice activity to the detector. Ah, no, that sounds lame. Really? Or I don't know. Could be subtle. Could be subtle. It takes like. no options, so. Let's vad it up. Yeah. Why are so many? Oh. Oh, oh I go. like this. Oh. This part is is I did like fire. That. Yeah. <laughs> oh. And just for <laughs> just to see if we understand yeah, anything right. about this, anything at all. If we do this, <laughs> it Eddie should pattern. just change something like the, the it should Brightness. not shift anything around and it should just yeah. i guess change the brightness okay so it is a value in db if type is amplitude the okay deeps. so we can say something like this no yeah we don't understand anything um, about this phaserville is asking could you make it into a single command using pipes instead of intermediate files yes you can mm-hmm yeah, I, yes, I, yeah, but the problem I'm, is I'm then you have to be explicit to... about some of the formats. You have to pass some more command line arguments to say, treat this as a raw file. While um, by default, raw already has some meaning to socks. So you can, you don't have to. It's, it's probably better to do it like this. I saw someone online doing something interesting that is related to this using pipes. They were using FFmpeg to grab the stream from the camera and then use socks okay. in, in a pipe fashion and then use FF. Uh, actually, they didn't use FF play. They used M player to play the results. So you would do the, the bending in real time, which is cool. Oh, well, that sounds like a, how do you do? I don't hate huh. this. I don't hate this at all. Let's go no, more brutal with it. Subtle eh? and nice. I will take it. Yeah. Oh, I'll this take is. It. This I don't is awesome. understand it, but I'll take it. Yeah, these colors are very nice designs. Purple again. Whoa. We should call this video. Purple haze. Is that taken? Oh, Just we kidding. have plus and. Oh, but that's for the synthesizer. Okay. I thought we would be able to like bring two effects together or maybe bring two videos together. We didn't try compressing. Oh, fair point. 
Let's do it and then wrap up. Compand. Compand is fine. This oh, is compression in terms of um, Oh, but this zipping. is data compression, yeah. Yeah. I think that compand is what, is what we want. So it turns out that both tremolo that we liked and volume that I also liked, they just have to do with scaling, multiplying based, by a constant. Yeah. Or yeah. I guess in the case so, of the tremolo so multiplying by an LFO. Could have. Yeah. So here we need an attack and a decay. We'll take this and then everything else is seems to be optional. Uh, here is an example, okay. Hmm. Goddamn purple, <laughs> but it looks nice. It looks decent. And I guess it is purple because I have a black background, but I suppose that any other color will turn yeah. into something else. Mm-hmm. Nice. Um... Add contrast, comparable to compress and compression. Yeah. Ah, okay. Modifies the make it sound like... <laughs> <laughs> I like this much That's more, nice. actually. That's nice. I like that color. Yeah. It's still dark purple, but like something about it. Oh, the DC shift. Is nice. We have to do that. Oh, we are yeah, learning you gotta, that you actually shift the, DC. the static changes are looking better. So, by how much? By apply the DC share. Zero point five. Goddamn purple. <laughs> but but like an interesting purple. What about going the other direction? Oh. Green. Better not be purple. There you go. Nice. And what if you do a lot, like minus three? Oh, you're going subtle. No, I, I am going with minus three. <laughs> Green. Ah, <laughs> oh, motherfucker. Green and, screen. And I'm going to guess. So we are starting to learn something. Three is going to be purple, isn't it? Hey. Yeah, there we go. You know, we should make a troll tutorial, which is like how to make a green screen. <laughs> and then you write out this Oh, that's kind of nice. There's like little dots on, on your mustache. Very interesting. Whoa. It's like an aging effect a little bit. This uh, is shift is like a, is a keeper. Of Terminator. Yeah. The emphasis. Okay, so simple we learned is like is like the ticket. Don't go crazy. Oh, that's kind of like a low pass. <laughs> I like how. What it is the description the of the de emphasis? Yeah. It is a um, oh, high should... shelf that is cutting. Okay, there we go. Oh, and these are included should, in many classical some... albums like the Beatles and Pink Floyd. And if yeah. you look at this, it looks like something that would be on a Beatles movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, how are we doing on time? Um, four minutes. That should be enough. Let's create a JavaScript program real quick that bends using some formulas, some mathematical formulas. So we have our input file that is this file. Import file system from node fs promises. And we are reading this file as a byte stream then we are writing this file and in between 
synchrotron is saying so would you try out stuff like you are now and then apply it to a full length video like I, what we were thinking is like get a bunch of like short clips and like edit a video from that but yeah like i mean like the world is like we're, we're still working with a limited kind of raw materials i want to see like what happens if you put a photo of nature into these things like that could be kind of interesting or just to kind of take away from the monotony of a video, it'd be nice if a video kind of glitches as it plays out. So yeah, I think, yeah, I think it's, and also just, I saw a lot of like color palettes that I kind of liked that like worked together, but they were also kind of interesting and aesthetically pleasing. So now Ooh. let's do the things so we what did. What did you do, Leandro? I wrote a little program that reads a file as a stream of bytes, changes the oh, stream and of times bytes. It by and, 0 .9. Yeah. So that's a simple formula. What happens if we multiply Looks it? Looks like by, an old camera. We multiply it by what the previous pixel. Well, there is a problem here where the previous pixel doesn't really exist. So it's going to multiply by undefined. Whatever. This is JavaScript. It will work. Green. <laughs> God damn. Oh. Uh -huh. I kind Whoa, of like our something. little formulas better. Than, I love that. Than yeah, uh, the I audio effects. These. And if we add to the next, not the next one, just like 2,000 above it. <laughs> Whoa, lovely. These are so good. All right, so do you want to wrap it up? <laughs> sure. So what did we learn today? <laughs> well, <laughs> we learned a lot, actually. We learned about FFmpeg yeah, no, and we how to lot. use it. We learned that there are headerless files for audio and video. We learned about socks and we learned about the effect of many audio effects in video files. And we could keep playing with yeah. different bit depths and uh, encoding. We used a law everywhere. We could be using eight bit without any compender in the middle. There is a lot that we could keep playing with. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we are like, ever finishing and this project. You know, we learned the unlearnable. You know what I mean? Like we learned that there are certain things that were just like what, and that's cool too. Um, yeah, I mean, this project, you know, it's projects are just ways to play with stuff and get weird. That's what I always say. Um, but we'll do something like I, I, I want to also just be able to like get my hands on the code and try it with different like raw materials, all those things. Um, I think that'll be kind of fun. Um, and of course, you know, I think Leandro, I don't know how far you want to develop this, but I'll, I'll, you know, it'd be nice if there's like a little program that you can just quickly put stuff into and quickly get stuff out of. And I think there's a gap in the market there. Not that there's like an insane amount of demand, but just like a very simple to use, get in, get out quicker with an arm full of glitches type of thing would be yeah. nice. Yeah, we could even have something that would randomize some of the settings. If we find something that is subtle enough and that we can stack, we could randomize the settings or we could return to my original explanation in the beginning where we explode the video into a bunch of frames because then we have more control over the and modulation of the nuts. parameters. And then we could yeah. apply maybe even something like socks or FFmpeg but to each frame, frame by frame, and and change it that way. Yeah, that could be fun. Uh, for me, uh, uh, we can keep exploring this. I think it's interesting. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, and of course, like dream, dream is like if this is in Reaper, then you can like start automating and stuff. So I don't know, but I don't know. It's like it's hard. But yeah, that idea that we talked about where the video processor talks to a JS effects or even the video processor yeah. itself could do some things like these simple formulas are doable in 
Well, to some extent, they are doable in the video processor. It gets a bit harder because we are sort of mangling frames. We are going across the frame boundary. Yeah, here. like they have to be rendered, right? For for this type of thing to make sense. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. I, I think that this is very promising. Very fun stuff. Take care of yourselves, everybody. There will be um, more streams in the future, but we don't know when and we don't know how and we don't know why. So, you know, stay tuned. Smash that like button. <laughs> Subscribe, all that shit. I know all of you who are on the stream side. So all of this is just a formality. Uh, take care. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Bye. For watching the stream, you know how great it has been. Or maybe it sucked, and I am glad that you stuck with me. And so we'll all will be back together for some more coding or talking or chilling. The next time I'll be streaming.